In this video, we will show you how to replace your driver's side front axle on this Toyota Sienna. This will be located behind your front wheel. Let's get into it. A quick note when doing the axle, you might lose some transmission fluid. To check the level, you're going to have to have it at a specific temperature, and to know the temperature, you need an electronic scanner. Okay friend, let's get started on our job. We're going to have to safely raise and support the front of the vehicle so the wheel's off the ground. After that, to remove the wheel, remove all five of your 21 millimeter lug nuts. Now that we've removed the wheel, the next thing we need to do is pay attention along the front of your front strut. We're going to dislodge the ABS wire and your brake flex hose from the lower aspect of the strut area. To do this, we'll be using a 12 millimeter to remove the mounting bolt. As you remove all of your hardware, give it a close inspection. If it looks like anything's rotted and damaged, you want to go ahead and replace it can reach in this area, we can start dislodging this. Want to make sure we do not put a tug on this as we continue. Let's continue on in the center area here, removing our axle nut. To remove your axle nut, you'll be using a 12.30 millimeter socket. With the axle nut off of there, we'll continue on with a hammer and punch directly in the center of the axle. Once you've broken the axle free, continue on to installing a lug nut to hold your rotor in place. Let's make our way down to the bottom of the suspension. We're going to separate the ball joint from the lower control arm. To do that, you'll find that you have one 17 millimeter headed bolt and two 17 millimeter mounting nuts. Continue on, you wanna pull down on the control arm in comparison to the ball joint. While pulling down on that, you can pull the ball joint and knuckle away from this area. Continuing on, we're going to carefully start pulling the knuckle away from the vehicle. While doing so, we're going to pull the axle out from the back side of the wheel bearing. Careful for any pinch points for this. Now with the axle separated from the wheel bearing, you want to continue following the axle to where it connects to the transmission. We're going to dislodge it from this area by gently prying. This can be done from underneath the vehicle. Keep in mind when you do this, there could be fluid in the area. Have a collection bucket handy. I've got my pry bar here. Now we can remove the axle from the area. There it is, friend. Once you have the axle out of there, the next thing you need to do is clean and inspect the seal. If it looks like it's torn, worn, or damaged in any way, go ahead and replace it. Now's the time. Clearly, there's still some transmission fluid coming out of here, but we can feel the seal, and it's soft and pliable. Now it's time to install our brand new axle. We'll carefully take this and slide it into the transmission. Now, as you can tell, I'm not completely seated. We're going to have to use a rubber mallet at the far end of the axle. We want to be very careful not to cause any damage. While I was tapping on that, I can hear an audible difference. At this point, I'll just have a quick feel along the backside to make sure I'm completely seated. 
Continue on to taking hold of the axle closest to the transmission and give it a nice tug, trying to pull it away. If it slides outward easily, it's not locked in. Assuming it does not pull out, you can continue. We can get the axle nut off of here. We'll coat the splines with some anti-seize. Spread it around with a glove finger. You don't need very much here. Let's carefully slide the axle into the back side of the wheel bearing here. You want to align the splines. You can start pressing this in. Now it's time to attach the lower ball joint to the lower control arm. For this, you're going to flex that control arm down. If you need to, you could use a pry bar for this. Continue on to aligning everything. You're going to have to push the axle into that wheel bearing a little bit. Along the bottom, we'll be continuing on with our hardware. As for the mounting bolt itself, you may have to carefully start squeezing the ball joint and control arm together. We want to make sure we do not cross thread this into the wrong position. Once they're started, snug them up, torque them to 68 foot-pounds. We'll make our way back looking at the ABS wire, the flex hose, and our front strut. We're going to re-secure everything here. The first thing you want to have is the ABS wire. We're going to take that and put it in position, aligning the mounting bolt hole. Once you have that in place, we'll continue on with the flex hose. That slides right underneath this area, holding the ABS wire in place as well, and we'll continue on with our 12 millimeter headed bolt. Start it in, snug it up. Make sure it's completely secured. You don't want it coming loose and hitting up against something, potentially damaging it. Let's install our axle nut. When installing your axle nut, you never want to use an impact tool on this. By over tightening the axle nut, you can cause damage to your bearing. Now it's time to torque the axle nut. What you may find is that it's going to want to spin on you. If that's the case, you could have a second person inside of the passenger compartment holding the brake pedal, which will in turn stop this from turning, or you can get this closer to the ground with a pry bar diagonally holding it in place. As we bring the bar across here, we'll make sure that we are not causing any damage to our lug studs. We'll torque this to 217 foot-pounds. Once you do have it torqued, the next thing you need to do is pay attention to the slot that you can see on the tip of the axle here. We're going to use a hammer and punch and drive the nut into that area, locking it in position so there's no way this can loosen up on you while you're driving down the road. Let's get this off of here. Now, before we put the wheel on, there's something else we need to do inside this wheel well. It's checking the transmission fluid. To be able to add to transmission fluid, assuming you lost some, you're going to be inside of this wheel well, and we're going to remove this plastic panel. The plastic panel itself should be held in place with one push clip along the forward area and two 10 millimeter headed mounting bolts. Our push clip is missing. For that, typically you can just pop out the center to unlock it and then slide the rest out of place. That exposes our 24 millimeter fill plug. 
We'll just break this free now, start it back in a couple threads. Just give that a quick inspection. Start it back in a couple threads. Now at this point, we're going to start talking about checking the transmission fluid on this. This is just the fill port. To check the transmission fluid, you're going to have to have a scanner that you can check the temperature of your transmission fluid. That fluid itself needs to be between the temperature of 104 and 113 degrees. Anything above that, the fluid's going to be expanded too much and you're not going to get a proper level. With that said, once you do have this hooked up and you can tell that you're at the proper temperature, you're going to make your way safely under the vehicle. Now the next thing we're going to have to do is start using our scanner so we can check the temperature of our transmission. You can see I have a listing right across here. It's telling me what my temperature is. The temperature the transmission needs to be at while running needs to be between 104 and 113 degrees Fahrenheit. Once we've reached that temperature, we're gonna make our way underneath the vehicle. Now to do this, we're gonna go ahead and start up the vehicle with our foot on the brake, run it through each of the gears ending in park allowing it to get up to the proper temperature, and then like I said, we'll make our way under the vehicle. Anytime you're running the vehicle, make sure you're in a well-ventilated area. Now let's make our way underneath the vehicle. Under the driver's side, you're going to find the transmission pan. We're going to remove the check plug down along the bottom of the transmission pan. While doing that, what you're going to find when you remove this is if any fluid comes out, you're over full. If no fluid comes out, you wanna make sure you make your way up inside that wheel well and top off the fluid with the manufacturer specified fluid. Once you do see fluid coming out of here while you're within that temperature spec, you're going to go ahead and put this plug back in. You wanna to torque it to 22 foot pounds. Let's clean our mess. Now we can make our way back up into the wheel well. Now back up in the wheel well here, we'll go ahead and tighten up this fill plug, torque that to 36 foot pounds. Now that we have that fill plug torqued, we're gonna reinstall our plastic cover across here. We have two 10 millimeter headed mounting bolts, as you know, and there should be one push clip across the front. Double check to make sure that's completely secured in place. One last quick inspection in this area and we'll continue on with installing our front wheel. Start on all five of your 21 millimeter lug nuts, bottom them out. We'll get the wheel safely back down on the ground and torque each of these to 76 foot pounds. With the wheel safely on the ground, we'll be torquing these in a crisscross manner. Torqued. Okay friend, we finished the installation of our front axle. At this point, you want to make sure you pump up the brake pedal till it's nice and firm. Take your vehicle for a road test down to your local alignment shop. Thanks for watching. When only the best will do, demand TRQ. The only company that lets you view before you do. TRQ is committed to offering the highest quality aftermarket auto parts that are engineered for peace of mind. Thanks for using and viewing with TRQ.